Sonic Microphone, on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Pod Doctors on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast on the BBC hit series, Doctor Who. I am Sean fangirl Ask, And I'm Steve, and tonight we'll be discussing Series 13, Episode 3 of Doctor Who. I'm a little depressed because it just dawned on me as we were about to go on air that we are halfway through this season now. Yep. This makes me kind of sad. Yes, but fortunately we get two specials with Jodie in them before she regenerates. So so we're not really halfway through with what we'll see of Jodie. But it feels that way. But it's yes. so weird, too, seeing one, like, continuing kind of episode, too. Right. Yes. <laughs> it, it is kind of strange. And I know this is definitely more classic the way they've done it. But it's so strange. It's hard to get used to. By the time I'm ready, it'll be gone. Yeah. And we got timey-wimey all over the place in this episode. Holy moly. You are not even kidding, Steve. This one was like, wait, what? Hold on. Rewind. And like, I swear, every time something's happened, I'm like, wait, wait, what? Wait, hold on. Hold What? What? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my face. And it was just crazy. It was crazy. And I, I kind of loved it, but it was still crazy. And Ruth. Oh, my God. We need more. Give us some information. Is If this ends up being some weird dream. <laughs> Okay, no, uh, this is <laughs> Chibnall's way to, to tie up his timeless children arc, I believe. Before and a way to mess with all of us. <laughs> we're going to get his version of the origin story. This is really going to mess with all of us. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, gosh, I can't. Well, Steve, ratings. Did we have any that finally came out? Yes, we do. Episode 3, 0.09 in adults 18 to 49. That up had with 0.337 million viewers. Also up. And 52nd rated cable show for the day, which is Again, up. Yes, I will have to admit, I was one of those that did not watch live, honestly, because I thought it was on an hour later. Right. Okay, you think I was used to the time change by now, but <laughs> obviously I have things very screwed up in my head and as to which time something's supposed to be going on. So I apologize. I will be part of that 52 million people this week, I swear. <laughs> in other news, fans of vintage Doctor Who can enjoy a new version of the lost William Hartnell story, Galaxy four on dvd and blu-ray beginning november 15th the soundtrack has been turned into a cartoon and the release includes remastered versions of the surviving one and a bit episode it's nice to see the hartnell era getting some love in these animated releases presumably now that they have vicky steven and the first doctor drawn animations of the other 25 missing episodes from the original season three will be easier to make holy cow that many yeah. it's so weird when you say that and and i did catch some of the animated one right uh was it the second or third doctor that third they did doctor. last year yeah, okay and it was so weird yeah. seeing it animated because it's like you're not expecting it and it's not like you know okay hey animated doctor who because i i believe there was wasn't there like an anime version or am i thinking a different show i don't think it's a different show oh but <laughs> like i feel like if they did it now it would just be totally animated and you'd be fine right but like hearing like the old audio and then seeing it just like this is kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't go too 
over the top with the scene because obviously in animation they can add all sorts of stuff that they didn't do in the actual you know show so you gotta reel it back and i think that might be a little hard because i've seen some of the old episodes and i crack up with some (laughs) the special effects oh yeah which were of course were probably like cutting edge but that's like with every show you watch growing up and you watch something as you're older and you're like wow that was bad (laughs) you know (laughs) so i can only imagine these animators like oh yeah we can do this and they're like no 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 that's way too advanced bring it back right bring it back but i'm excited to see it since there's so much with heart and all that i haven't gotten to see and you haven't been able to find since they lost it so that should be pretty exciting though for all all the you know doctor who hardcore people out there yeah the boomers (laughs) and those of us who want to watch some of the classic who really get into like the origin that you guys have all had a chance to see right so yeah i'm kind of excited but we'll see how that works out when the animation comes out because i might be like oh my gosh i can't watch this (laughs) i'd rather just do audio but let's jump into once upon a time (laughs) i'm sorry once upon time not even a in there because this i almost needed a board with some string to keep track of where we were oh absolutely (laughs) time is beginning to run wild quite an understatement there on a planet that shouldn't exist in the aftermath of an apocalypse the doctor dan yaz and vinder face a battle to survive yeah and all sorts of people showing up or aliens that i thought we weren't gonna see again exactly we open with a new character bell she's recording a message for an undisclosed someone and I was getting excited. I'm like, oh, who's this supposed to be? What's she supposed to do? Then at the end, that kind of threw me. Right. Because honestly, I thought it was going to be someone that's going to help Doctor from her past. But yeah, who knows? The way the Flux did, like everything crazy, who knows? Exactly. And I knew I knew the actress from somewhere. And where did you know her from? Because I kept thinking she looked really familiar. The Netflix series Irregulars. Oh, I've probably seen her in the preview then because I still haven't finished watching or (laughs) I'm trying to finish another show before I jump into that. And it's like, I don't think I can finish. I'm going to have to just watch all of my shows at once. (laughs) I get confused (laughs) with everything. That's great to see her in this. So hopefully we'll see her in more and hopefully things will work out for her character and especially the way it ended. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> which, of course, we'll get there. But we have Bell reporting on the devastating effects of the flux as she flees from a bevy of Dalek. What? Where did you guys come from? I thought you were all gone. Right. And next thing we know, we see a swirling cloud of blue. I Seriously, I'm like, what's going on with the confetti? But right. apparently <laughs> they're a type of mite feasting on humans. Probably not good. You think she could have like told them like hide, hunker oh, down, she did something? Try to tell them to hide, but without getting herself noticed. Apparently those people had not seen those things before. Right. Didn't have any clue what was about to happen to them. Yeah. And that didn't work out so well for them. No. Meanwhile, we have the doctor watching as Swarm almost snaps his fingers, but it seemed to have rewound to like the countdown of number three. Right. But of course, when he snaps his fingers, it's going to kill Yaz and Vinder with the unrestrained flow of time. The doctor, of course, is trying to figure out a way around it, utilizes her sonic screwdriver, removes Yaz, Vinder, and Dan from the Temple of Atropos, and places them where? Oh, someplace safe. Eh, not, not so, so much. much yeah <laughs> but into the heart of a time storm with the plans to conceal them in their respective time streams the trio disappear and what the heck a weeping angel appears in their stead confusing the doctor well yeah, yeah. it confused me oh yeah <laughs> but we had had an idea that a, a weeping angel was going to pop up from the first episode right it was just that little bit and i kept thinking okay things are really going awry when the angels arrive but or is next, it? You know because what? At the end, I started to really question. Right. Because this yeah. is the way you can escape the current time, is to go to the past. Maybe they're trying to save everybody. <laughs> what a way to go, but... Right? That would be really strange. And no guarantee of what time they're going to send each one of you, so... <laughs> That's true, because it, yeah, it could be anywhere. But we'll get to that, because I have a, I have a theory that I have to run past you when okay. we get to the end. 
And anyone out there who's wondering about this tinfoil hat theory, it's super tinfoily. That's all I will tell you right now. <laughs> so get out your rental draft, people, and prepare. But we have the doctor standing outside the Temple of Atropos with Vinder, Yaz, and Dan. What? All dressed they're wearing... in armor. Yeah, I was going to say, what's with the uniforms? And at some point, we, the doctor's just going forward like we gotta do this we gotta do this and then suddenly she's confused and they look at her and they're like oh temporal haze like yeah this is normal what is this that's all i kept thinking going what did they go forward in time is this happening in the future no it seems to be in the past and that's really strange but the doctor snaps out of her confused state and can orders the group to end the Ravagers. And I'm like, wait, when did we get the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. <laughs> we need to stop the siege on Atropos and fix the time flow. Okay, sounds great. But the next thing we know, we have Dan in Liverpool with Diane. Oh, hey, she's back. Somehow she's back, he's back, and they're blipping into weird locations. And I'm really getting confused until Dan spots the blue mites. I'm like, wait, are they moving them around? Are they like mini angels? I was really, yeah, I, I was going on a whole roller coaster of what if, what if, what if. Yeah, well, and you got to think about it. You've got Swarm by name. And then we yep. have these blue mites swarming. Well, is that him just traveling through time and taking people out? Ooh, interesting. Didn't think about that. Hmm. And he did look a lot different, too, from when we see him later in the episode. Yeah. So maybe it has something to do with that. That's a good one, Steve. We do get a little backstory on Dan. We learn, and this this is my question about this, is this in the reality that he is from that we have seen already, or in this weird time reality that he was thrown into? Because we learned that he was engaged to be married 15 years ago, but his fiance ended a few days before their wedding, and I believe he said she could do better, is what was said. Yeah, that's what she told him. That's pretty messed up. Yes. And when Dan stops and asks, when is this, just like the doctor had had earlier in the episode i felt horrible because all of a sudden diane's like i waited for you and then next thing we know she disappeared i was like whoa right that rough first of all it's like okay just go ahead put all that guilt on him already and he doesn't even know what's happening that's why i was confused i'm like is it the now we know the whole thing with diane but the engaged part had me like hmm i don't know right yeah it was Really weird for Dan and Yaz and Vendor because the doctor wanted to hide him in their own time stream. But where in the time stream? Right. Dan and is it actually happening? Just a little bit ahead of where he left. Yeah. And then later on, Vendor's having to relive his past. Yeah, we know what happened with him happened. Right. And then we get Yaz. Later on, we hear her tell the doctor, this isn't a memory. So it's exactly. got to be even a little bit further ahead in her future, is what I was thinking. That's why I was getting, had she stayed in... Was yeah, she had she had never met the doctor at all. She'd right. still been a cop and... That's why I was getting really confused. Right. That flat she had with her sister and her partner. Wait, I thought it was just, I thought her parents were living there. Yeah, this wasn't her parents' house. This was completely oh. different. It was yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh. So can I don't remember what the actual house looked like. But we get to go forward and we see Yaz in her police uniform talking with the doctor who is also in her police uniform. And after the doctor goes on this whole like spiel about a store, which I thought was funny because it was such a thick accent she'd laid on. Right. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? And then it's, oh, it's just Yaz's partner, like you had said. And Yaz is confused, which I feel like Yaz somehow is managing to stay slightly out of time where she remembers stuff where like most of them don't. Right. So what are they going to throw down with that? Is that going to give us something else at the end of this series? Like, is Yaz somehow, oh, what was her name? The doctor's daughter. Was right. it Jenny? Yeah. Is she, is she like somehow related to Jenny? Like, that would be weird. But you know what? I'm starting to think anything is possible. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> Look what they did to Claire. Oh, my gosh. 
Let Please me don't. <laughs> ah. Yes, sees a weeping angel in the side mirror and then in the back seat and suddenly it's all gone. I would be freaked out, too. It's like, all right, what, what's going on? Stop, stop, stop. Right. <laughs> Get the hello away from me. Vendor is then sitting with Yaz, who's in a military uniform. It's like, wait, what? But Vendor realizes he's in the same situation that had occurred previously, but Yaz wasn't there when it occurred. And Vendor's interviewing for a position of the Guardian of the Grand Serpent, and he ends up snagging the post, which all I kept thinking is, ooh, Guardian of the Grand Serpent. Doesn't that sound spiffy? So the doctor ends up popping up as a hologram and she's trying to navigate and rein in the multiple time streams. But Vendor sees her and it's like, wait, what is going on? <laughs> Confused like we all were. Yep. But then pop, doctor's gone. Vendor accepts the job. Yaz vanishes. And we have the older gentleman who was in the military uniform. Can I just say Vinder was very underdressed for this kind of <laughs> for a commander? interview? Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, you look really, really comfortable, I guess yeah. is the best way. <laughs> Next thing we know, we're back at the doctor's timeline where the doctor, yes, Dan and Vinder detonate a device that explodes the temple front doors. And then are we going in? Not quite. We're back in the time storm where the doctor is confronting the moray and they warn her that the pressure of the vortex will inevitably overpower her. I love it because she's like, you don't know me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, don't we know? Then back inside the temple, the doctor, of course, threatens the ravagers and orders them to stand down. And we see Swarm and Azura waiting in the wings on, well, thrones. And that's why I said Swarm looks very different there. Yes, he did. He had and much more horns all over his face. Well, not even that. It's like, I don't want to say the skin, but like he had like more layers, it seemed like sticking out because when we see him in, I don't want to say the now, the future, <laughs> the, the where we were supposed to be before all this started. Right. He was like purple and yeah. it was very thin, like the skin. And then back then when it, we're looking at the past, it looked much thicker. Right. Absolutely. It did. So when you brought up that the swarm of blue things could be him somehow, that's why I was like, oh, what if it's somehow like pieces of him? Right. It's like, oh, that that kind of works, right? Yep, That's why he's so thin right now. It's like, yep. oh, okay, I can see this. See the tinfoil starting to come out. But before we get too far in, the doctor spots the fugitive doctor, Ruth Clayton, as her reflection on, it's uh, not quite a mirror, but, you know, the reflective surface. The fugitive doctor doesn't recognize Jody, but the doctor's like, oh, I must be stuck in your memory. Because reclaiming Atropos happened in the past, which I thought was weird because they're talking to each other. So it's like, right, okay, yeah. wait, <laughs> what's happening? Because they're they're talking in like the now, trying to figure things out. So is that going to come into play? Right. There's so many things, so many questions. You are giving me too many rabbit holes to go down. <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. Next thing we know, we see Dan running through a tunnel and he collides with the man from 1820s Liverpool. But he has a futuristic gun. Where are you from? I don't know. Right. What's going on? No. <laughs> this this part absolutely blew my mind. It's like, okay, 1820s. How the hell did you get a ray gun from the 60s? <laughs> right. And they just throw him in there. It's like I total Scooby-Doo red herring. That's all I keep thinking. Yeah. <laughs> because the guy kind of pushes Dan back and they're like up against the wall because Dan sees the blue might. And it's like, oh, OK, you saved him. What are they? Well, nothing gets answered because Dan's neck, you know, up top side in Liverpool in, in his normal time. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> What is happening? And the the guy from the past is just kind of hanging out. Who the heck is that guy? Right. I'm telling you, that's just, it's stressing me out that he just keeps getting sprinkled in yes. and we know nothing. <laughs> Because I feel like it's going to be like this huge blow up, like this guy is going to be our linchpin. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> it's, it's either going to be a linchpin or a red herring. And I don't think there's anything in between. 
Right. Everything depends on him. Absolutely nothing depends on him. There's not a, a between. And it's like, I don't know which way it's going. No. But he saved Dan. So I guess we should be happy. Right. Then we get to go to I don't know what timeline because Belle finds a ship and ends up arriving in the cyber zone. Now, where you might think, oh, cool, fun, cyber zone. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> because that's a whole horde of cybermen watching and marching and trying to find organic life to convert. I thought the cybermen were all gone too. Again, where are these guys all coming from? Right. But she's on the hunt for her companion. We just don't know who that person is. Right. Meanwhile, we have Vinder meeting with the Grand Serpent, who he's supposed to guard, who is kind of a douche. Oh, yeah. He informs Vinder of the upcoming meeting with potential aliens. And I thought it was interesting because, I mean, who wouldn't say what Vinder said, basically? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, win-win. Like, because he's explaining what's going to happen. And when I say that, when you say that, that's not like, oh, I need to take over your position. Right. I care less. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, that sounds good. That's just like me being a cheerleader, right? Right. Absolutely. But no, 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 no. This guy decides to mock Vinder and he's like, oh, you're stereotypical. And yeah, you, know, you want my position. No, nobody wants your position. Nobody wants to be the Joe Jackass that you are. Okay. <laughs> just saying with your horrible horrible highlight that was horrible yes petition would not agree with even doing that to somebody but that's beside the point <laughs> vendor keeps saying though he doesn't want to relive this memory and it's like huh why and who is yes in this because she's just kind of standing off to the side quiet right but in certain kind of robes and it's like hmm what is this and then we get to flip to yes again like you said earlier she was with her sister in a flat playing video games but her sister then turns into the doctor who then disappears again and the doctor is next thing we know with the mori who is trying to give her some information without giving her information because why be straightforward when just the whole universe is at stake right 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 now we know that everyone's in their respective timelines but we don't know how long and we don't know exactly what part of their timelines they're in but that's when we do get some information from yaz that when the doctor does pop back it's like yes this isn't my place. This isn't a memory that's happened to me. So it's like, okay, great. I'm safe. But when am I? Right. And then the video game gets weird. And I will yes. tell you, if this ever happened in any video game I was playing, I would probably do the same thing. Yes. yes. I don't care how much I paid. <laughs> so please don't let any Easter eggs pop up in any of these games with the weeping angel. <laughs> because when they just pop up, the doctor's like, yes, keep your eyes on the angel. She's like, what? What is it? And of course, what happens? It starts flashing and moving and comes up into the living room. Oh, this is not good. And where the hell did they come from? Or right. this one come from? But Yaz ends up destroying the video game console. And like I said, I would probably do that too if all of a sudden one popped up. Oh, hell yeah. I'm yes. just thinking, <laughs> oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot. Would you rather be out some money <laughs> or be thrown in the past? Uh, uh, I know, but still it's like, ooh, ow. <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. But we do get to see the doctor confronting Swarm and Azur in the past at Atropos. And their options are banishment or execution. And it was so weird because we get the doctor talking and she starts like flipping into the fugitive doctor and then back to our doctor now. It was so weird watching it happen. Yes. It was really cool, though, how perfect that was. And we have Swarm informing her about who Passenger is, which finally, I think I asked that question last episode. Right. We get some information. Well, Passenger isn't necessarily a person. It's more like a sort storage unit. Think of Passenger as a giant USB and people are plugged in. There's five passengers which have millions of lives inside. So endless prison, endless opportunity to hold people in there right but is this good or bad so as soon as he said that i'm thinking this is probably not good <laughs> right absolutely it wasn't because of course one gets disintegrated and then azure does the same it's like oh i can't believe you just did that right because there was no grandstanding from azure it was just psh, bam yeah. done like at least we got like the whole kind of villain monologue happening <laughs> so you know gave 
time to maybe save the people in there. But no, 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 no. Azure is like, nope, we're just going to end this. And then next thing we know, the doctor summons the Mori, who apparently were locked away inside one of Passenger. Well, haha, that's all on you guys because you should have paid attention. Right. Then we get to see Dan, Yaz, and Vinder barge into the temple, imprisoning Swarm and Azure in a stasis field. And that's where I assume... They end up getting transported to where we see in the very beginning of, what was it, episode one? Yes. When all of this started to happen. Yep. It's like, okay, we kind of sort of have something wrapped up here, but not quite. Kind of, sort of. We at least got the backstory, I should say. But back in the time storm, the doctor implores the Mori to do the same thing with Swarm and Ezra as they did in the past. Send four Mori to the present to save her friend. And is it happening? I don't know, because we get to go back to Belle, who leaves the Cyber Zone. Unfortunately, some Cybermen apparently board her ship, and she really expertly shoots them down one at a time. I was impressed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the last one, she incapacitated, but she was going to interrogate them. And as the Cyberman was asking questions, because I must record, what is your mission? And she says, love. It's like, that's not a mission. That's an emotion. (laughs) I'm like, wow, probably not the best thing to say, because she seemed really, what's the word I'm looking for? determined yeah <laughs> so she ends up just taking the cybermen out altogether and forages ahead on her mission and that's when we get to go back to the grand serpent negotiating with the said potential allies but he has some conditions he also makes vinder stop the recording of the conversation even though vinder protests he's like did i stutter right and this is what i thought was weird because when we see what happens in the next scene why wasn't that question? Because Vinder stops it and the conditions of everything happening were basically to kill some targets. There was, what, nine people. He wanted five returned right, for trial, I believe. Yes. And four were to accidentally, on purpose, be murdered. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much just shady stuff. And so when Vinder explains the situation the guy in uniform's like uh this will get back up to the grand serpent he's like well i want the grand serpent held accountable do you really want to do this and i thought that was weird because where the recording would have ended it was after he says i have some condition right so why wasn't that question exactly so it's like oh wow is everybody in this guy's pocket more than likely because he kept saying he didn't want to relive relive this memory and we pretty much find out why right and i loved it because then yaz is there like i can submit the report or i don't submit the report have you talked to your loved ones i felt like that was a setup too yes absolutely it was it's like oh no don't tell them if you did because that would be really bad or something yep and well bender is adamant I swore to uphold the Constitution, not one person. I want this report sent. And next thing we know, Vinder's sitting in his old ship at, at the outpost in the middle of nowhere, recording a message to a special someone, noting that he'll be here for a really long time, and I'm only allowed one message. Yeah. That is rough. You yeah. could talk one time. That's it. Wow. What a jerk. That's all I'm saying. Back in the time storm, the Mori reveal that they sent four of their kind to the present to help the doctor. Now she must depart the time stream, but the doctor begs to revisit one more memory, another puzzle piece. And yet she doesn't end up where we thought she was going to end up. Oh, no. (laughs) He thought we were going to see more uh, Ruth, but no. She ends up in a mysterious location with an equally mysterious woman. The woman is accusing the doctor of meddling with too many time streams. And the lady claims that this universe is over and the flux was created purposely. So that's when my brain started going crazy. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Like I said, tinfoil hat is coming. It's coming. But in addition, the mystery 
someone strategically orchestrated this whole mess because of the doctor? Yeah. That just seemed very strange. Yeah. Who would create the flux because of the doctor? Now, this woman looked really familiar. And I'm like, what is she doing? Is she in a TARDIS? Is she supposed to be the TARDIS? But the TARDIS, I don't think, would be all evil sounding like that. No, not at all. Now, I don't know who she was, but she, I will tell you, she reminds me of, and I can't remember the exact episode. I think it was Ten's run. When he goes back in time, or not back in time, he goes back and he's in front of the Time Lord when they're wearing their big giant outfit. And we see the two people on either side, like with their hands over their face. And we get the, they're standing with their faces covered like our old enemies. Right. She reminds me of one of the women who uncovers her face, which again, part of the tinfoil hat. So I'm like, she's supposed to be that woman and somehow that's going to be connected to that old episode to give us some information who those people were. Right. Like, do you know which episode I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So does that even make sense? Like that thread being pulled? Possibility. There's no doubt about that. that. I mean, this is going way back. And I think this lady is actually even further back. Oh, really? Yes. My gosh. This would not surprise me in the least. If oh this gosh, lady so many threads. turns out to be the doctor's original mother who abandoned her on Gallifrey. Oh, that would be weird. Yeah. Huh. She's been watching her child ever since and actually have has set this up. Talk about a long game. Yeah. But we'll see. We know nothing. No, we don't. But <laughs> <laughs> we can give you some tinfoil hats. <laughs> My ultimate one is coming. We're almost there. Hold on, people. We're almost to the ultimate tinfoil hat theory that I have. But we have the doctor returning to the present. And I kind of say that in quotes because we have no idea when the heck we are. But we see Yaz, Dan, and Vinder appear to be safe. And the Mori are back on their respective platforms in the Temple of Atropos. And Swarm and Azura reappear, revealing that they're pulling the strings for this whole shebang. It's like, are we, though? Yeah. Are we? <laughs> I don't and think so. they also show that they had hid Diane, Dan's friend, in Passenger. So we at least know that she didn't turn into Azura, which I think is what we originally had thought had happened at one point. Like, somehow she became Azura or Passenger. Like, it was weird. I, I think I was just thinking that. Right. But after the duo vanishes and... Everybody's just standing here like, what just happened? Right. Of course, Dan wanted to go after him. Which you can't blame him. No, not at all. But they just keep saying, okay, well, we'll help you find Diane. Don't worry, we'll get her back. Whenever the doctor says, don't worry. Yeah. They kind of do the opposite. Yes. But they start heading back toward the TARDIS and Vinder recognizes it for what it is. But after he opens it up and looks inside, it's like, wait, what? This is a TARDIS. How do you know what that is? Exactly. Again, head scratching time. Yes. Well, the thing that he said, one thing that said, I don't think I never I, I didn't realize they weren't real or something like that. I never thought they were real, but he actually knew what it was. So apparently he's heard stories of TARDISes and was just surprised to see one in person. So I wonder if the diner is out there flying around and that's how stories got started. I'm sure it is. We have our doctor who wishes to learn about who created the flux and why she's associated with it, which of course I would want to know that too. But next thing we know, oh, that message that Vinder sent, it was to Belle all this time and she keeps watching it. And we also find out Belle is pregnant with their child. So again, when are they from? I feel like that's going to play a big part. But we have Team TARDIS transporting to Vendor's homeworld, which apparently was decimated by the flux. And his objective now is to find Belle, whose objective was to find Vendor. (laughs) So I feel like there should have been a better way. Like, hey, can you help me find Belle? Something instead of just take me here. Because he's like, no, I have to stay here and look. It's like, I feel like there's some better way. Yes. But Doctor gives Vinder a device to stay in touch, should they ever be needed. 
I guess basically a phone. <laughs> she gave him a cell phone. Let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> Press zero. That's a drug line. And then we're back on the TARDIS and a weeping angel ends up leaping out of Yaz's phone. And the doctor is telling Dan not to blink. And of course, Yaz, because she knows this and trying to pull them together. And Dan is freaking out like, what is that thing? But next thing we know, we hear Dan, I blink. I think I blink. (laughs) I'm sorry, but if somebody tells you don't blink, you're pretty much going to start blinking right away, right? Absolutely. (laughs) Just like when you see somebody yawn, you pretty much are going to yawn. But suddenly the angel hijacks the TARDIS, taking control and isn't doing it in a bad way, like actually using the controls and moving stuff. Right. Absolutely. And the doctor is like, the angel has the TARDIS, which, by the way, my license plate holder is the angels have the TARDIS. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so here's my tinfoil hat theory going way back, because this was like a weird long one. That woman... Okay, now I like what you said, that it could be the original Doctor's form's mother. But if the woman is somehow connected to the thing that I thought she was with the 10th Doctor's run, right? and that woman somehow became an angel, that's who is actually there. And it was an angel kind of doing what you said, trying to save the people, but trying to get the Doctor to the right place to save everything. Because the angel knows that if everything ends in this time period, they're all going to die too. So the best way to do everything is to get on the same side as the as the doctor because the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing and bring it all around to to save the universe so they still have basically a buffet right (laughs) (laughs) now if you followed along with that first of all gold star to you because i feel like i'm talking at 100 miles a minute and super hyped up because that was the weirdest thing i had thought of but somehow i feel like that worked yeah it and if it could be a possibility If that plays out that way, (laughs) I need to know how Chibnall got into my caffeine-addled brain to get this thing out. (laughs) Because it just, it seems so crazy and weird, but so Doctor Who. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Well, that's everything with this episode, but let's go deeper into the vortex i feel like that needs to be like deeper 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 yeah. <laughs> so the final words from the doctor were the angel has the tardis an obvious nod to the angels have the phone box from blink a line good enough to go on a range of t-shirts i think i had that t-shirt too yep jody whitaker was wearing her reverse coat costume in the scenes where she was placed into the fugitives doctor's memories you didn't notice that. Her I did blue not went, notice. Blue. Oh my gosh. I gotta watch again. And the CGI Daleks floating through a forest rather avoids the historical problem of getting the props to work on rough terrain. We first saw a Dalek levitate up some stairs unassisted for sure in 1988's Remembrance of the Daleks. Although a gravitational disc had been used by the deadly pepper pots to fly in 1973's Planet of the Dalek. And you could argue we saw one levitate out of the sand of the desert planet Ardeus as early as 1965 in The Chase. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm serious. Like, the Daleks really go back, like, forever. Oh, yes, they do. (laughs) And the fact that they didn't think they can get stumped by a log, maybe we need another way around this. Yes. Like, early on. I think it's great. I loved how they're bringing all these back, and it's just like, wait, these are all the big bads that we haven't dealt with. And they actually mentioned that at some point, and I can't remember who said it, but it's like, oh, the oh, it's Bell. Yeah, it was Bell. The Suntarans, the Cybermen, the Daleks. The Cybermen were all battling for territory. And it's like, why? Everything's been destroyed. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it didn't make it. sense. <laughs> it didn't make sense. And yeah, I feel like Bell, it's like a big deal and it's going to be weird. Right. Like how Bell plays into it. Bell, that old guy from the past and that strange woman. Right. Are they going to be able to wrap this up in a cute little bow for us is the question. <laughs> I'm thinking not. (laughs) But I have a feeling I'm not the only one with my crazy theories and questions because I believe we got some feedback, did we not? 
Oh, we sure did. Once I let Jazz know we were recording Wednesday night, she got us some feedback for this episode. So let's take a listen. Hello, this is Jazz, and I have some thoughts on Doctor Who Season 3, Episode 3. My first thought when I saw it was that the Doctor doesn't use guns and her companions shouldn't either, which I thought was very odd. I did like her darker new coat, though. Thought she looked styling in that. I was thinking that the plots perhaps are confusing on purpose so we don't notice the plot holes or the fact that it doesn't make sense very often and if time is actually broken and so is space is that why the angels were able to get into the TARDIS because I thought the TARDIS had some safeguards to prevent that that's why they had used the TARDIS to escape the angels in the past but I remember one of the episodes I believe a security guard was looking at the angels on a video and then he was toast so maybe the same thing goes for iPhones and that's how they were able to get in. So I'm sure that'll be an interesting episode. I know that it's been constrained by the pandemic but I was hoping of more story for Jody's last go round and maybe a few positive and fun times. They've been doing various PR do 10 things and see if you win kind of activities and they all seem to get along well and joke around with one another and that goes on screen but so far it just seems kind of sad and that's not what I was wanting. (laughs) I'm hoping it gets a little uh, more positive while we're still running away screaming from the angels. I feel that uh, they keep giving us more questions than answers and we still have lots of questions from the last season where she was on the floor because the master had shown her her life story which evidently had lots of holes in it because she's still hunting and pecking around for more information. I did like the fact that we saw the last uh, doctor in her reflection so she got to make an appearance which I thought was good even though technically I think she is from her past I thought it was a clever way for the doctor to hide her companions and her fam in plain sight in their own memories so that was good I'm still enjoying the series even if it is all a bit confusing and I hope that Jody goes out the way she wants maybe not with a bang but at least a way that's enjoyable so love the series Thanks very much. Bye. A bit confusing. That's cute, Jazz. <laughs> if it's only a bit confusing for you, you're way ahead of me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, this has definitely been a wild ride for three episodes, that's for sure. And yeah, we both agreed that it was nice to see Ruth back and hopefully she will play a bigger role. Yes, I hope so. And I forgot to mention that, yes, the when the doctor was seeing Ruth, also Yaz and Dan turned into Carvinistas, <laughs> whatever race they are. Oh my gosh, yeah, I totally forgot about the dog guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, great hearing from you again, Jazz. We appreciate your feedback and looking forward to hearing from you again. Thanks, Jazz. Well... Holy cow. You know how we feel. You know how Jazz feels. Let us know how you feel by shooting us an email or audio or however you want to do it to contact us at fangirlzone.com and we will gladly play it on air or read it on air and respond. Please rate and review us on iTunes and every other platform you find us on because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends about Doctor Who. Come on, you know, I don't know who I'm telling here. If you're watching Doctor Who, you're already telling your friends about Doctor Who. Am I right? Absolutely. (laughs) And this is just a crazy ride, so I can't wait to see what we're going to get. And of course, we hope you're enjoying our podcast. You can always go to www.fangirlzone.com, check out our contacts page to find all the ways you can get a hold of us and like tweet along with the rest of the Whovians when the show is playing live because there are so many theories. I thought mine was crazy. Go on Twitter. Forget it. You're going to be lost with so oh, many yeah. theories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for this episode of The Pod Doctors. I'm Steve. Always the wrong questions. This universe is over, Doctor. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. Until next time. There is nothing wrong with your internet. Do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, 
sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. 